Hello, welcome once again. Um, in yesterday's discussion that I discussed about the ignition system, there was some confusion actually about the ignition coil, why I called it a transformer, and also about this computer, this ECU, ECU, electronic control unit. This is a computer. Like we said yesterday, this ignition coil has to be on and off. When it's on, when it's on, you have current flowing through a primary winding. This is the black, represented by turns on the wire. That coil will induce a voltage and, and make a magnetic field expand. Now, that's not enough for us. We don't need that. That's not going to give us high voltage, a high voltage spike. What's going to give us the high voltage spike is this being on and off, on and off, on and off. So, as you can see, the other side of this primary winding, this is the primary, the black, remember? Let's say the negative. <clears throat> this has to be turned off. It goes through a transistor. Here is a representation of a transistor <clears throat> on the computer. This computer has a transistor which will turn this on and off, on and off. So this side will go on and off. What does that do? It it expands the magnetic field and it will collapse the magnetic field. When that happens, that's when you get a high voltage spike going to the distributor and eventually to the spark plug in each cylinder. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if you have six cylinders, you'll have six ports over here six terminals with six spark plug wires fine problem is from the viewers that they said they didn't understand the transformer and didn't understand what's going on with the computer so let's look at it what determines what when the computer will turn this on and off sensors sensors are all a bunch of sensors cram uh, crankshaft sensor camshaft sensor all these sensors are inputs to him so the arrow will be indicated by going into the computer ecu is a computer okay so he this information from all these sensors is information for him now relying on that information he will make a de determination or a decision when to turn this off and on therefore this is the input. The senses are what? Inputs. Inputs. <clears throat> so what are these? If he controls him, so what is, will this line be? What will this feed line be, this control line? It will be an output. As you can see, the arrow is going out. <clears throat> this arrow is going in. That means what? means it's an input to him. This arrow is going out. That means this is an output. But to him, it's an input. So you have to understand the variations. Uh, you have to understand the variations of inputs and outputs. In order to understand computerized automotive, it is absolutely mandatory to understand inputs, outputs, who's the receiver, who's the transmitter. Especially among uh, among uh, when you when you're troubleshooting um, uh, 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 data lines, you have to know who's receiving, who's transmitting. So sensor is, is the inputs to this. Who's the receiver? Who's the transmitter? He's transmitting information, but who's receiving? The computer is receiving. Who's transmitting a control line to him? He's transmitting. So who's receiving? He's receiving. He's, he's, the output is coming from here, but to him, he's getting an input. You have to understand that. In order to be successful in automotive, you have to understand those basic functions. Now, let's get to the, let's get to the problems. <clears throat> I call this a transformer. For a transformer to have the properties, or a coil to have the properties of a transformer, you have to have a primary winding. Here is a primary winding. In order for the properties of a transformer, you have to have a secondary winding. Here's a secondary winding, right? But you're going to say, Joseph, 
doesn't matter. Just because you have a primary or secondary doesn't mean it's a transformer. Well, you still have what? The battery is what? DC coming in. How can you have a transformer working on DC? You can't. How do we represent on a graph DC? And how do we always represent on a meter? When we always see this, this symbol representing volts DC, and this is AC, why, did you ever wonder why this symbol is a straight line? <clears throat> and this is varying. Did you ever wonder why? Well, let's take this example. This is 12 volts. We know this is 12 volts. This is 12 volts from the car battery, right? We're not talking about the alternator. We're just talking about straight voltage right now. Open circuit voltage of the, of the battery. Represented over here from zero line here to 12 volts. This is 12 volts represented over here. What do you see about this? You see this is flat. At, with, if this is the voltage and this is time, one second, two seconds, three seconds, let's say one second, three seconds with respect to time it's always straight it's always at the same level 12 volts here 12 volts here 12 volts here with respect to any point at any time it never changes that's what dc volts is yes it goes in the same direction it's direct current but it's always the same voltage it doesn't vary so how can I put this voltage into an ignition coil and yet I can still get a high voltage out of it to feed every cylinder in that engine to give us compression? Doesn't make sense, does it? As a matter of fact, the primary winding is a low resistance, an inductance. It is so low resistance that it can uh, attract or pull a large amount of current overheating the transformer will which will damage the 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 transformer because dc cannot go through a transformer or ignition coil if i just have flat dc going into this without this computer take this computer out of the the example will i get high voltage no i will not get high voltage because why i need expanding magnetic field i need a collapsing magnetic field to give me the high voltage spark to get to the spark plug, <clears throat> to get through each spark plug in each cylinder. So without him, I have nothing coming out. But not only do I have nothing coming out, I have a low resistance, low inductance, and I will create more current going through the transformer and might damage the, the ignition uh, coil. <clears throat> so this, how do we go about it? This will turn this on and off. AC <clears throat> works with the transformer. We know that. In your household, the AC voltage in your house is 120 volts AC with 60 hertz. <clears throat> and I always stress the point 60 hertz. Abbreviated like this. If you have 57 hertz, that's not good. Call the electric company. If you have 59.9 hertz, that's good. That's close enough. But you have a varying voltage. AC is represented here and here. It's varying. It could be it could be 60 volts here, positive, 60 volts minus here. But you notice that you notice the difference? This is always 12 volts. This is not. At this point, it might be 20 volts, 30 volts, 50 volts, 60 volts. Plus, over here it might be minus. 10 volts, minus 20 volts, minus 30 volts. It's always varying. Guess what? That's what he's doing for us. We want a varying voltage. That's the key. We want a varying voltage, a voltage that will go turn on and off, on and off, on and off, a pulsating voltage, a varying voltage. They call it, what does a varying voltage mean? Fluctuations. What does a fluctuations mean in electronic terms? That means it goes from one level to another level, back to another level, back to another level. This stays at one level all the time. If you look at the symbols, this is volts DC. It's always at 12 volts, 5 volts, 3 volts. It's constant. Look at this symbol. 
it's varying, always different, right? So be it like this, an AC. Now, <clears throat> we don't need this AC. We can have a DC, but a varying voltage, a pulse. That's what he's creating. He's creating like a pulse on and off, an, exp an expanding magnetic field a collapsing magnetic field expanding collapsing expanding collapsing what does that do when that colla when that electro electromagnetic field collapses it induces a high voltage that high voltage goes where goes to the distributor and then where does it go goes to each spark plug wire so if you have a, a v6 or if you have a v8 in those great express V uh, uh, vans, Chevy Express vans, which were, which are absolutely uh, 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 unbelievable vans. But anyway, <clears throat> if you have a, you'll have eight wires coming out, eight wires with resistance. It doesn't have to be a set AC. It has to be a varying voltage. That's what he gives us. He's going to turn it on and off, on and off, on and off. Here's the pulse, on and off, on and off. That's what we need. We need the fluctuations, the varying voltage, the pulses. That's what we need to create this. If you have a straight DC voltage without this, like we said, this wire is broken. This, If this wire is broken, you, still, you only have DC. You will not have high voltage. If the connector here is broken and the wire is good, still, you will not have, you will not have a, a pulse, a, a pulse, pulse, pulsations or fluctuations enough to drive a high voltage. If the transistor represented by this is not working, it's shorted to ground or shorted to chassis. Here's the ground of the chassis. Let's say this transistor. If you ever want the transistors, the case of it is the collector. And there's installation and there's to make sure that this is not connected to the chassis, which is ground. If this touches this, you have a short to ground from collector. It, you'll not only destroy the, the, the transistor, but it'll overheat too much current. So therefore, we have a fuse. But besides that, I don't want to get technical. But anyway... This transistor, if this transistor is not turned on and off, no pulse. If no pulse, guess what? No high voltage. So when you have a, a problem with no spark and you say, okay, let me go to the ignition coil. I'm going to change the ignition coil. No. Remember, there's a computer. I need the computer to give me an output. What kind of output? An output that's varying. That's always on and off, on and off, turning him on and off. What else do I need? I need inputs from sensors. If I don't have inputs from sensors, he's going to go wacko. If he goes wacko, he's going to drive him wacko. If he goes wacko, say goodbye to high voltage surge. One relies on the other. That's the difficulty of computers. So I hope you understand a, a, a flat DC <clears throat> to an ignition coil or a transformer will not make the transformer work because you have no uh, alternating change of current of electromagnetic field. You need something to vary it like an AC <clears throat> or a varying DC. There's many transformers out there, especially in TVs. <clears throat> there was in TVs where you had absolutely no AC, you had DC. Yet we got a very high DC voltage to your picture tube. Sometimes even 30,000 volts, 40,000 volts from DC. How? Because we had pulse, pulse modulation we had, it was called. So therefore, remember this. This is not what we want. We want this. We do not want AC. We cannot get AC. This is DC. So 12 volts AC is coming in. This control line is critical, very important. And then we get an output. So here's the output. Which direction is the output? This way, correct? This way is the output. That means that what? This is giving an output to who? To him. And what about this direction? Where is the arrow? This way or that way? This way. So now you have in each cylinder, you have a spark, you have fuel, you have air. What will that do? Hopefully that will give you compression. And that's what you need, combustion in a gasoline engine. So 
please go to my channel, Joe Latroska Maddox for Auto. Like I said, I hope in the future to give you more hands-on. I'm working on so many different projects at the time. I've been asked uh, about electronics uh, um, projects. So um, I guess there's a big demand for it, believe me. More time than I have. But I hope this will help you understand. The red one is the output. The black one is the input. But there is a control line to this one, the primary, this one. I picked this pictorial because I think this is better for people to understand what's going on rather than a schematic. A schematic will not teach you everything. This will teach you the basics, the fundamentals of what's going on in ignition system, how you get spark. Of course, like I said, we take this out nowadays. We take this out nowadays. Therefore, these break down a lot. These break down a lot. <clears throat> we still need a spark plug. We still need a piston. We still need a, need a cylinder with gasoline engines. We still need ignition coil to get the high voltage. And, of course, what do we need? We need module after module after module. We need many computer modules. Like I said, in the future, <clears throat> don't be surprised. You're going to see, instead of hard wiring, you're going to see fiber optic. And they, already, they already have lights that are fiber optic in uh, uh, high-performance cars, sport cars. And you're going to see, instead of tw 12 volts, this is going to disappear. It's going to go to 24-volt batteries. Why? More accessories, more current needed, more voltage, more electronics. That means all your diagnostic equipment that you have, <clears throat> your scan tools and all that, have to be changed to what? To 24 volts instead of 12 volts. That's the time for me to retire from this. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please go to my channel. Thanks for watching.